Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, January 16th, 2015. This week, how to use brushes with layer masks in Photoshop and Element. When I was learning Photoshop, I confess I was a little intimidated by layer masks. Now I really enjoy using them to blend a photo into a page using brushes, and it helps me get more out of my brush purchases. Now I wonder why I resisted for so long. Hopefully this will demystify layer masks for you too. To follow along, open up a piece of plain digital paper like one of Maple Brook Studios linens or Katie Pratit's new crafted card stock or any of the plain card stocks. Open a photo and drag it onto the digital paper using the move tool. Click to select the photo layer if it's not already selected. Next, you'll need to locate the Add Layer Mask icon in the Layers panel. It looks like a rectangle with a circle inside it. In Photoshop, you'll find it at the bottom of the Layers panel. In Photoshop Elements, you'll find it at the top of the Layers panel and it looks more like a square with a circle inside. Now, this was added to Photoshop Elements in version 9. So if you're using an earlier version, you're going to need to upgrade to use layer masks with this technique. Alt-click or on a Mac System option click on the Add Layer Mask icon. Now don't panic because at this point your photo totally disappears. If you look over in the Layers panel, you see that the layer mask is black and then it's completely covering that photo layer. Next, press D or X on your keyboard to change the foreground color to white. You'll see the foreground color over here in this little chip that's on top. If it isn't white, go ahead and click on it, choose white, and click OK. Next, get the brush tool. You're going to choose a brush to paint your photo back onto that cardstock layer. I like to use Katie Pertit's watery box brushes for this technique, but you can use any kind of a paint brush. Now you'll need to load the ABR brush file into the software to use the brushes this way. If you don't know how to do that, check our YouTube channel or our blog for the video on how to load brushes into your software. Choose a brush and then come over to your page and then click on the page using the brush. I'm going to increase it using the right bracket tool just to get this quickly done for the video. When you click, you'll see a portion of your photo appear. At this point, you can either change brushes. I'll get a different brush. And I'm going to increase the size a little bit just for speed. And click again. Keep clicking using different brushes and you can even go into your brush settings and use this little dial to change the position of your brush. And then that way it looks a little bit more natural. Once you get all of the photo brushed back on just the way you like it, you can try reducing the opacity of this layer a little bit by dragging the opacity slider down. Or you can change the blending mode. This helps some of the texture from the paper show through and it finishes your effect. There are so many variations on this technique. You can use a shaped brush like a heart or a star or a photo block and click once with it to bring the photo back in that shape. Or you can use a round brush and scribble across your page to bring back your photo in a few thick swishes. Using your own creativity, you can get some really great effects using your brushes and the layer mask function. Thanks for watching and be sure to check back in two weeks for the next Designer Digital's tip.